If you've ever tried to animate a box rolling before, you are going to know it is a nightmare. And it's not as easy as, you know, just have it keep rotating because its axis of rotation is something that needs to keep changing. For example, if I wanted to rotate this as if it's like taking a step uh, off of this axis in this direction, right? I can't just, you know, rotate this on the Y axis because that's not, it's not correct. What I have to do is I have to select this edge move the cursor there and then rotate on the uh, Y axis, making sure we're pivoting off the 3D cursor. And that gives us one rotation. But now if I wanted to rotate again, uh, it's the axis is wrong. I now have to shift it here and etc. right? So this is the issue. Uh, what I'm gonna show you how to do in this tutorial is how to do this a box uh, animating this or rolling this would have been very useful for my short film that I made like a year or two ago I actually had to do physics because at the time I didn't know how to do this and I don't know if it would have been possible without a geometry node so uh, in this tutorial I'm first going to show you how to do like three rolls in a row and then I'm going to show you how to take that idea and send it to an infinite number so if this was to just keep going it would keep rolling okay uh, so let's get started um, in Blender, we actually don't need to do anything except let's delete the default cube, add it back in so we have a fresh cube. Um, and let's go to Geometry Nodes and apply a Geo Nodes uh, modifier. The name of the game is basically resetting this cube's position using rules that match what I did with the 3D cursor, right? Moving the pivot point, rotating it, moving the pivot point, rotating it, and having it be this cumulative thing. Every time that we uh, shift the position, we are going to use set position. And you might think, oh, why are you not using a transform node? It's because this uh, rotation that we care about, it doesn't give us an axis of rotation, right? So it rotates, but again, it's like off its center. So with set position, we get more control. So with set position, I'm just going to map the position to the position. In other words, do nothing, right? I'm saying reset the cube's position to its original position. Nothing is going to change. And what I want to do is I want to rotate this so it's going from this axis in this direction by one step. Okay? Let's use a vector rotate node because if we take the position and apply a rotation to it, that's going to be the thing. Now let's think about what we want. If I was to rotate this right now, it's just going to rotate off the z-axis y because our rotation axis is set to 0, 0, 1, so it's pointing upwards. We want it to point, in this case, we'll say we want it to go along the x-axis, uh, which means its axis of rotation is the y, right? This line passing through it, that should be its kind of gimbal, right? So now when we rotate it, it's at least going in the right direction. The center of rotation should be somewhere over here. Uh, what is the coordinates of that? Well, it's 1 to the x and negative 1 to the z. So super simple. And eventually we're not going to put in numbers, but we're going to use a math uh, equation to determine what this is going to be every time. Uh, but now when we rotate this by 90 degrees, you can see it's uh, pivoting off the right uh, axis. Okay. Now, if we want it to keep rotating, do a second step. You might think, oh, just keep rotating it. No, because we need to update the pivot point. What that looks like is adding another vector rotate node. Let's look at this from the Y axis and I'm going to zero out the rotation. So, so far, all that's happened is one step. And if we add more, it's not going to be correct uh, because now our center of um, rotation is not here, but it's here. So what is that? Well, it's still negative one on the Z, but instead of one on the X, it's plus one, plus two, it's three. Okay, so in other words, our cube, which is two meters wide, has shifted by two units, which makes sense. So we add two to this number. So three negative one is right here. We still have the y-axis. Let's do another rotation. Beautiful. So now it's working. So the way this uh, would animate is you go from zero to 90 here, 90, and then afterwards you go zero to 90 here. And let's just do one more iteration to make the pattern clear, and then we'll proceduralize it. I mean, it's already procedural. Um, the next thing is uh, our center of rotation was here. We now want it to be here. Uh, what's the difference? Again, we shifted the cube by a step of two, which makes sense since every face of the cube is two meters wide. So now we set this to five. And then let me zoom out a little. And then we have our third step. So long story short, we have its step. Uh, one, two, three times. Now, how do we animate it so that we're not like doing keyframes here? Uh, that's a good question. 
Here's how we're going to do that. And this is important because when we, again, proceduralize this, and the idea is I don't want to add in like an infinite number of vector rotate nodes. I want it to somehow always know what the center of rotation is because otherwise we need to keep adding nodes for every step, right? Uh, what we want to do at this point is make a, a time function that says, first, make this go from 0 to 90, then stop, then this one 0 to 90, stop, etc. Um, easy way to do that is with a map range node. So when the time goes, when scene time in seconds goes from 0 to 1, so we want our first rotation to take a second, have the angle go from 0 to 90. Bit of a technicality. When you plug this in over here, you're going to notice, let's see uh, what this does, it rotates very quickly. Uh, this is because when you plug this in, or when you, when you animate this, it's in degrees, but when you plug it in, it's in radians. So you have to put in pi over 2 if you took trigonometry. If you haven't, just put in pi over 2. It's the same as 90 degrees. So now we have it take a step, and it stops because it's going to stop at pi over 2. Afterwards, afterwards, from after one second, from second 1 to 2, it should do the same thing. So let's see. One second, two seconds. Beautiful. Let's do it again. So now it's going to be on its third second. So from two to three, plug that in. And then you could see it's uh, doing the thing. And you could see uh, if you wanted to add a fourth rotation, what would you do? Um, let's just really just get that pattern in there. So when we make it a function, it will be obvious. We add two to the uh, center. And for the map range, we're going to go from seconds three to four, plug that in. So one, two, three, four. Beautiful. Okay, now let's uh, make it so that we don't have to extend this forever. So we need to kind of rethink the logic here. So again, set position is going to have position plugged into position. Nothing's changed. And uh, we're still going to use a vector rotate node. But this time, I want to somehow get an infinite number of steps along the <coughs> along the uh, x-axis uh, using only a single vector rotate node. Well, uh, we know the center. Remember, for our very first rotation, our center was 1, negative 1. So, by the way, the z is always negative 1, if you noticed. x was 1, then 3, then 5, then 7. We always added 2. Um, Z, we can keep at negative 1. X needs to be a function of uh, time where we keep adding 2. Okay, because that's how it was updating. So, to begin with, and, let, and again, the pattern is 1, 3, 5, 7. It's the odd numbers. So, the way we do that with uh, seconds is what I'm going to do is I'm going to say take the seconds and round down, use a floor function. So it's going to begin with 0, and then it's going to go to 1, 2. It's only going to have the integers. Take this and multiply it by 2, OK? Because when time, when seconds is equal to 0, a second hasn't elapsed, we round down, uh, we multiply by 2, we get 0. Then when one second is elapsed, we round down, we get 1 times 2 is 2. Then we get 4, then we get 6, then we get 8. It's almost what we want. We just need to add one so we get the odd numbers. So now, when this is under a second, it's going to be round down. Zero plus one is one. Then one times two is two plus one is three. One, three, five, seven, etc. Okay? Um, the axis needs to be on the y-axis. That's constant. Um, but now, we need a function to somehow... So this is updating the center of rotation, but now we need those like map ranges down here that tell us like how to offset the angle. So let's see what happens if we just plug this in raw. So you can almost see it's doing the right thing. It's rotating, especially with the first step. It has the right area or the right point. But then it gets updated, updated, updated because the center of rotation is getting further and further away. So it's doing a larger and larger rotation. So somehow... Um, the second thing we need to do is this offsetting of the cube by uh, two units, right? Because what I'm saying here is in the beginning, it's fine. And then it updates. Why? Because the cube should have already made it to this area before starting to rotate. So that's what we need to do. Uh, first of all, though, uh, the time should be one second is multiplied by pi over two. So let's see, we, get, we should get one full rotation and then it does the whole thing. So I'm just making sure one second is 90 degrees. And let's also run this through a fraction node. So seconds goes from 0 to 1. And then when it goes from 1 to 2, it goes back to 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. So let's see. Boom. 
boom, boom. So you can see it keeps resetting to zero. But um, again, the center of rotation is changing, not our position. So we need to update the position, literally the position. Um, so again, it does one rotation. Now, on the last frame, it should be here. But you could see it resets. So that's what we need to capture. Uh, to do this, what we need to do is we need to add. So I'm going to use a vector math addition. We need to add a bit of offset to this uh, over time. So it's going to be by 2, by 4, by 6, by 8, right? Because the cube is two, 2 apart. And we actually have a function for this. It's the time rounded down times 2, right? So let's uh, see what that does. We use a combine XYZ because we only want to shift the uh, X axis. And we plug this in here. So let's see. Boom, 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 boom. I could say it forever because it's going to keep going forever. And uh, by the way, if you want it to go on a different axis, all you have to do is you have to update this, change this from like X to Y, um, all that kind of stuff. But you can see generally it is uh, working. Uh, one tiny correction is you can see it almost starts with a bit of a rotation. This is because seconds doesn't start at zero. It starts at one divided by the uh, frame rate. What do I mean? It doesn't start at frame zero, but we start at frame one. So one way to correct this is to just start at frame zero. <laughs> uh, but assuming we start at frame one, what you could do is you could take this and subtract away um, one divided by the frame rate. Should, should that be correct? 1 divided by 24. It does not like that. Let's see. It should, it should be a frame divided by a second. Let's try that. Frame divided by a second. Boop. Oh, wait. We're on frame 11 was the issue. No, that, that, it does not seem to like that. Uh, flip it. Let's try flip. Oh, wait. I plugged in the wrong thing. Frame divided by a second. Why does it hate me so much? I don't know. Either way, I'm sure there's a simple correction that I'm not thinking of right now. It really should be 1 divided by 24. Oh, it is. Okay, I don't know what went wrong. Uh, by the way, if we're at 30 frames per second, that's going to be slightly wrong. It needs to be 1 divided by 30. And then we have our thing. By the way, a tiny... Tiny thing that we could uh, do here, by the way, is since this is repeating between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0 and 1, uh, we could add some kind of animation to this. So what I mean is I can, like, shape it. And now you're going to see it almost, like, stops the step carefully. Or you could do some kind of weird bouncing thing. Right? So it's almost like teetering on the edge. So you could, you could do some fancy stuff with this. Uh, either way, uh, the main idea of this tutorial, sorry about that final thing I couldn't figure out. It really should be frame divided by second, but whatever. Um, I just wanted to show you how to have a cube infinitely spin. And uh, you could give it some character, as I uh, just showed you. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. How long did we go for? 13 minutes. It felt longer, but that's because it was like pure math. Um, so either way, we've reached the end of the tutorial. And as you guys know, I like to pimp the ever living shit out of the Patreon. So listen up. Uh, there's a link in the description for how you can support these tutorials uh, that I make for free on YouTube. Almost every single one is, is, is and will be available for free. Um, the 770 names you're seeing right now are patrons that are supporting this channel and the CG Matter. But if you want to help and support me directly, you get three things uh, in return other than just supporting the channel and keeping tutorials coming out. Uh, one, you get uh, early access to tutorials as long as they're not sponsored. So this video came out early for patrons and uh, you guys saw it a bit later, which is fine because you still see it for free, but they get the benefit of seeing it a day or a couple days early, which I think is fair. The second benefit is the blend file. You do not need to make this yourself. Um, I'm going to upload the blend file and you could just download it and use it. And that's true for hundreds of bun files I've made at this point, because uh, I've been doing this since 2019, which is a long time. And the third um, update 
update. The, the third benefit is exclusive tutorials. I don't do those too frequently, but those are just random tutorials uh, that I make uh, usually once a month, sometimes a bit more, uh, that are not available for free, but they're just me messing around with some extra geometry nodes usually. Um, so if you want to see a couple tutorials that I've made um, that are not available, on YouTube, uh, check that out. Either way, uh, if you decide to support this channel, thank you so much. If you've made it to the end of this video, you've also already supported the channel just by watching. Uh, thank you. Um, hit that like, subscribe. I don't, I don't know. See ya.